Welcome to video number eight in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahey, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Accommodations, also known as lodging, is a to-sleep component of the four operational sectors of tourism. Along with food and beverage, accommodation makes up the hospitality side. Hospitality is also the spirit of providing service to guests with a warm smile and a caring attitude. Lodging is an age-old profession as people have always needed a place to rest and find a haven from the weather and other perils of the road. From its humble beginnings in stables, caravansaries, monasteries, taverns, and spare rooms, the lodging industry now provides tourists with an amazing variety of properties and products to suit all needs, styles, and budgets. Accommodations come in many forms, ranging from hotels, motels, resorts, inns, and timeshares, to lodges, bed and breakfast, homestays, hostels, and campgrounds. The main purpose of accommodations is to provide a good night's sleep for travelers, but at minimum they should also provide a clean, quiet, and safe place to relax, store belongings, and use bathroom facilities. Full service properties also provide food and beverage, entertainment, business and fitness centers, meeting rooms, and in the case of resorts, multiple activities that are the focus of the stay. Today most lodging is purpose built, but adaptive reuse has turned many old castles, manor houses, and other notable buildings into modern lodging properties. Hotels are the typical properties found in city centers and other high volume areas including tourist areas. Many are full service and cater to business travelers, conventioneers, and tour companies. Hotels provide a variety of rooms, from singles and doubles to twins, which have two beds, and suites, which include a combination living and dining area in addition to the bedroom. Connecting rooms enable friends and family members to use an interior door between two rooms that is otherwise closed and locked on both sides. Hotels are often classified from one to five stars or diamonds according to their size, decor, furnishings, amenities, and services. In Korea, the Rose of Sharon, a national flower, is used. Motels, originally known as motor hotels, are commonplace in countries with widespread car ownership. Motels are normally smaller and cheaper than hotels with limited services and fewer amenities. Like hotels, most motels are franchise or chain operations. Additional accommodations that are smaller and more specialized, but often independently operated, are inns, guest houses, pensions, hostels, bed and breakfasts, and homestays, which vary by country in the services they provide. My favorite type of accommodation is the homestay, which provides the opportunity to experience what it is like to stay in a local house, save money, but at the same time spend it directly in the community, meet and be served by the owner, and avoid an institutional setting. In addition to hotels, major properties that are mostly corporate run include resorts and timeshares. Resorts are known for their unique setting, which enables guests to participate in their favorite outdoor activities, such as snorkeling or downhill skiing, and their fun-oriented atmosphere of activities and entertainment which enables guests to mingle and socialize in a relaxed vacation setting. Many resorts offer all-inclusive packages. Lodges are normally smaller in size with a more specialized purpose, fewer amenities, and shorter season. Timeshares or vacation homes enable guests to buy into upscale resort developments that ensure reservations for preferred times of the year in popular destinations worldwide. The dominance of independently owned and operated hotels gave way to franchise and chain hotels and those under management contracts beginning in the second half of the 20th century. The reasons were twofold. Travelers demanded better and more dependable standards and owners wanted access to brand names and operational systems, especially reservations and marketing. Franchisers signed up and rebranded existing properties and collected fees or built their own. Chains bought existing properties or built their own under various brands and operated them as a single hotel company with a mixed portfolio. Management contracts enabled big investors to buy properties and then hire hotel companies to manage them for a fee. The old joke about the three most important things for the success of a hotel 
is location, location, location. This is still mostly true, but service, value for money, brand reputation, and leadership from supervisors and managers to the GM and the corporate office are also vitally important. Staff of individual properties must also understand that the business they're working in provides a proverbial home away from home for all types of travelers. No matter what job they perform, hotel staff are salespeople for the property who are either serving guests or serving other staff who are serving guests. STAR is the Smith Travel Accommodations Report. It is a revenue management tool that benchmarks an individual hotel's performance against similar hotels and others within the local market. To receive the report, hotels must subscribe to its service and agree to report their data, such as occupancy rate, which is percentage of rooms sold each night, ADR, which is the average daily rate, and REVPAR, which is revenue per available room. In return, STAR compiles and delivers daily, weekly, and monthly data on the hotel industry. The STAR enables managers and owners to evaluate the financial success of their hotels, stay abreast of emerging trends, and manage their properties more effectively and profitably. Accommodations are featured in many forms of transportation. Cruise ships and long-distance ferries provide cabins, and many overnight trains provide sleeping cars. Some airlines provide sleeping pods in first class on their long-distance overnight flights, and sleeper buses in certain parts of the world provide a private berth to get horizontal and snooze the night away. Of course, many tourists bring their own lodging in the form of an SUV or a camper, and many backpackers use a sleeping bag with or without a tent. Accommodations are labor-intensive service establishments. Hotels and resorts in particular employ numerous staff for front-of-the-house positions serving guests and back-of-the-house positions performing functions needed to support guest services and run a major business enterprise. Many entry-level guest service positions are open to inexperienced, untrained workers who have an interest and aptitude in hospitality. The old saying among hoteliers is, hire for attitude, train for skill. Getting a degree in hospitality or hotel management can expedite advancement, but gaining experience, excellence, and continuous training in all departments, especially front desk, housekeeping, F&B, and marketing, enables motivated staff to rise through the ranks and become a general manager. Hotel professionals have the mobility to work in many international locations in a variety of service and support positions. Anyone interested in keeping up with hotel news, trends, and opportunities should subscribe to free e-newsletters such as HNN's Daily Update at newsletter at hotelnewsnow.com. Also, regularly check the websites of the American Hotel and Lodging Association at www.ahla.com and the International Hotel and Restaurant Association at www.ih-ra.com. Now I invite you to watch video number 9, Food and Beverage. Thank you.